Campaign 2020 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association Quick Trip Wisconsin Counties Association Wisconsin Realtors Association and Wisconsin Operating Engineers Local 139. And we're joined by Sylvia Ortiz Velez, who's a Democrat from Milwaukee running um, for the 8th Assembly District. Thank you for joining us, Sylvia. Thank you. Good morning. Um, you've been a, uh, outspoken about President Trump's immigration policies. Uh, over the weekend, a White House official suggested that uh, federal law enforcement agents uh, may come to places like Milwaukee um, in the wake of what we've seen in places in Portland specifically. What is your reaction to, uh, to that move? I think that... Um... This is one of the worst times um, in our history of as a nation to be um, having on top of what everyone's already going through um, with COVID-19, with the economy, with losing jobs, with just so many things, housing. I mean, the list goes on and on. I think that they need to have show some compassion and not do things like this right now. And they shouldn't do these kind of things at, at all, but definitely not right now. This is horrible. Um, when it comes to the pandemic, another area that's been hit is obviously tax collections in, in Wisconsin and elsewhere. Uh, the governor has warned that uh, tax collections could fall by as much as $2 billion this year. Um, to try to offset that shortfall, would you uh, cut spending or raise taxes and fees to offset the loss? How would you address it? Well... In Milwaukee County, we're actually going through a very similar thing. Well, <laughs> the worst than most of the state. <laughs> right, and unfortunately, um, there are going to be some tough decisions that are going to have to be made. Um, but when you look at where do you start cutting, it's just like in any household. You start cutting entertainment first. So that's where you start cutting first. That's what you have to start cutting first. And at the county, we have, you know, our parks have hit, uh, have had the hardest hit, you know, with furloughed workers. Um, for example, and we've had to make those adjustments there. Um, and we'll have to make other adjustments going forward. Um, so I don't look forward to um, any of those tough decisions, but we have to prioritize what are essential services. We have to prioritize what are the services that are affecting people of um, the people that um, are most vulnerable in our societies. So we need to make sure that we're providing those services. Um, but we have to look at, just like you would in your household, what do you cut first? You cut your entertainment, you stop going out to eat, you know, you start cooking at home. So, I mean, we're going to have to make some tough decisions. So, um, and as far as Milwaukee County, um, you know, I, I, Milwaukee County just recently passed a, um, a resolution um, for the state to allow us to raise our sales tax. Um, so we, we, I think we still need to look at that for several reasons because we pay some of the lowest sales tax in the whole state or in the whole country actually um and it's fair that people coming in and out of milwaukee county utilizing our infrastructure um help pit kind of pitch in um so we still need to push for we still need to keep going to push for that the sales sales tax which is most equitable so that it's not landing always on a property taxpayer. Now, I'm one of the only candidates that pays property taxes in this race. And I, I know that it's always on the property taxpayers. And a lot of people in my neighborhood are on fixed incomes and can't afford to have an increase in their property taxes. So I would not support that, but I would support an increase in sales tax. And we should, we should, we should be absolutely doing that. So. The legislature is obviously shaped by who draws the maps, who draws the districts. Um, who do you think should draw the next set of lines? Um, Governor Evers is working on his People's Maps Commission. Obviously, the Republicans who control the legislature want to draw the maps. Who do you think should draw those lines? Well, this is something that I have really... Uh, uh, passionate opinions on because I have a degree in political science um, and um, I have been instrumental in the past in creating maps, both at the county and at the city. Um, and what I can tell you is that um, it is very important uh, who is drawing the maps in the process. Um, that first of all, 
it's always important to make sure that we have as many people participating in our democracy as possible with that principle in mind. Um, we also may, need to make sure we pr protect minority representation. Um, but we need maps that reflect the will of the people in our state, period. And I have always felt, and I, I said this a decade ago, that there are no elected officials, whether it's at the county level, the city level, the state level, should be drawing their own maps. It should be done by an independent group of people as much as that's possible. Um, to be done um, in a way that gives voice to the people um, because that's the point of um, governing and being a representative. I know we've spoken in the past about hemp and hemp at the domes. Um, obviously a different topic is marijuana, but do you um, support legalizing both medical and recreational marijuana? Where do you stand on, on that issue? Absolutely, I support um, both. Um, but I, I, I do realistically, I realistically believe that more than likely, if something did pass in our state, it would have to start with medical. Um, but I believe in both. Um, and um, it's something that a lot of people don't quite understand too, um, is that in my district, 53215 and 53204, we have the highest deaths anywhere in the state for opiate and heroin overdoses. And um, there's been a lot of people in my district. I was just over the weekend spe speaking to someone who is, has been clean for um, 10 years now. Um, and um, they use cannabis. They use, they use cannabis. Um, they told me that their, their type of pain that they have, it needs the whole plant. Um, so CBD is great, you know, having, you know, um, CBD and having medical. Um, this is a person that could need it for medical. But the problem with, the problem with that is, uh, is that people who suffer, for example, are veterans who suffer from PTSD. They're not going to go see a doctor. Some of them are not going to go and talk to someone, but they're still suffering. And um, the medication can give them help, but they're never going to go and see a doctor. So um, these people are, you know, they're being harmed by not being able to um, have access to the plant, whether or not they have a medical card or not, because many of them are not going to seek treatment, but still need medicine. So um, for that reason, um, you know, um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a widow of a veteran. So um, veterans are some are people that I think very highly of um, in my mind. Be one of the reasons why I would support a full legalization is because many of our veterans are not going to go and get treatment. Um, they're not, they just simply don't. So, um, they shouldn't have to be sick to get, they shouldn't have to go to a doctor and prove that they're sick to get medicine. What do you think the legislature should do to try to address racial inequalities and disparities in Wisconsin, which has obviously been a um, long-time problem for the state? Well, I can tell you one thing they can, the first thing they can do is give us Milwaukee County, um, a minority majority county of taxpayers, um, uh, our fair share of our shared revenues um, so that we can fund our public governments and our local governments so that people will have access to services so that we don't have people suffering so that we have money um, to provide mental health services so that we have money to provide opiate uh, and addiction services before they hit our courthouses before they're getting our systems so they can get access to that but we don't have the money um, so first they, they can they can provide equal services to a minority group of people that are not receiving adequate or equitable access to public services. That's the first thing they can do. Um, when it comes to property taxes, Wisconsin has some of the highest in the nation, um, which is why school districts and local governments uh, can levy, you know, the, the, what they can levy in property taxes is obviously limited or capped. Um, they can pass referendums, but they have to go through the referendum process. If you're elected, would you vote to keep those property tax caps in place or eliminate them? I would absolutely um, vote to keep them in place. Absolutely. But uh, again, I do support, especially for Milwaukee County, uh, the ability for counties to make the decisions whether or not they can uh, raise the sales tax. So I think that needs to be a tool given to local governments. 
Uh, so keep the caps, but raise the sale tax. That's actually our, our next, next question, which is, um, oh, okay. do you think, uh, the question was, is it time to consider alternative sources of revenues for local governments, um, such as the half cent local sales tax that Milwaukee has been asking for? And I, I know you, you just addressed that, but do you want to talk about that a little more? I mean, absolutely. And absolutely. We, we actually, um, the plan that we have actually helps the property taxpayers that the plan that Milwaukee County and I also voted for, um, which was to actually reduce property taxes by 25% and raise the sale, raise the sales tax by 1%, 1 cent, um, which is, we have the lowest in the nation. Um, so it's really, and also we're able to collect from people that are coming into Milwaukee County that are utilizing our infrastructure, but they're not, our, they're not paying in. Um, so, you know, um, we need to move forward on that plan. Um, you know, the plan actually, the, the resolution we passed actually, just allow us to have a referendum on it at least let the people vote on their own on their own future and their own quality of life issues in our communities and we were not even allowed to do that um so um i mean i think we need to continue down that path of course but i also think you know there's other things that we need to do to take action and um but milwaukee county um it, it needs and we need a better deal from our state um and shared revenues as well so it's, it's a combination of things, but yes, absolutely. We should absolutely raise the sales tax by a cent. We can reduce the property tax burden on the property tax owners. So it's a win-win for everyone. Um, and um, we should take the, we should take the burden off the property taxpayers. Another area that's facing. I, what, I also wanted to mention one other thing, ma'am. Oh, sure. The other, when you talk about additional revenues, um, this is one of the, one of the areas that I am very interested in, and I just wanted to mention one other additional revenue that the counties across our state can look into, which is a, enacting a fee on Uber and Lyft, which are transportation network companies. Um, this has been done in over 20 other places across our country. It can actually help us to fix our infrastructure, our roads, and our potholes. Um, and it, uh, a small fee of 50 cents to 75 cents um, could really make a huge impact in the quality of life all of us here in Milwaukee County and it can be it can be a tool that can be used anywhere in our state um, it can help other places um, and a lot of small towns a lot of the um, their budgets are road repair and pothole um, and um, what we have found is um, wherever Uber and Lyft have gone in we've had more wear and tear on our roads uh, we've had more uh, a drop in um, transportation ridership um, so this can help supplement um, this money can go for public transit and it can go to to um, fix our public roads all across our state, including here in Milwaukee County. You're apparently a mind reader because the next question is actually going to be about roads. So um, oh, okay. <laughs> um, Wisconsin has never found a stable way to pay for its highways. Um, and as you just mentioned, road conditions are obviously an issue uh, in Milwaukee and around the state. Uh, Governor Evers had suggested raising the gas tax um, would you vote to raise the gas tax to help fund um, road construction, road repair? I, I would, yes. But I would also, in, uh, you know, uh, allow the counties to enact a fee on Uber and Lyft because the property taxpayers are already paying for a commercial industry to operate on our roads and they are not paying our state. Basically, they pay a flat fee, um, which they, get, they got a sweetheart deal under our current state statutes when they wrote them in 2015. I don't think that they envisioned uh, what this would become. The other thing to look at, um, our local government here at our city and the health department, they need to take a look at it. Um, but I know this is a more of a city issue, but it affects the whole state because it affects the well-being of our communities. Um, it has to do with um, Uber Eats and other companies that deliver food um, because nobody's regulating this industry. And this is an industry that needs to be regulated because um, um, you know, can you imagine getting a burrito um, two hours later um, it had sour cream in it? Um, I could go on and on. But so I think that they, I think that they need to do, do uh, they need to uh, absolutely would support the sales tax um, uh, or the tax on the gas um, because it's, it's, everybody's using it. Um, and if you, you know, everybody has to pitch in for our roads, including Uber and Lyft and other transportation network companies that are utilizing our roads. Um, thank you. So the gas tax plus the Uber and Lyft fee to help fund um, the roads. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to coronavirus and the COVID-19 pandemic, obviously healthcare providers have been hit hard um, in the midst of all of this. They've been 
uh, doctors, healthcare providers, nurses working nonstop. Um, but do you think the legislature should make hospitals a greater priority in the next budget cycle? Um, obviously, we don't know how long the pandemic can last, but what do you think about that? Well, I'm, I'm not just the hospitals, but our hospital, our healthcare system. Um, obviously, you know, as this pandemic has shown healthcare, it should be a fun, you know, it is a fundamental, it's always been a fundamental human right, but I think this points it out. And then also there's a lot of disparities, as you know, um, when it comes to people of color in the healthcare system. Yes. Um, and I think that this pandemic has also shown um, the effects um, of those disparities. Um, I, I, I can tell you, I, I will always fight to make sure uh, that we have act, access to adequate health care in our state. And we should uh, act, absolutely expand Medicaid and Badger Care in our state. Um, there's a lot we need to do. So that's that's a good start to look into our hospitals, but we need to do more than that, a lot more than that. Look at the whole system, access, you know, outcomes, all of it. Obviously, health, the, the local health clinics are in Milwaukee, played a key role in testing we've seen the 16th streets you know uh, north side south side also playing a big role in getting the testing out so people can find out if they're positive or not um do you think that businesses that follow all of the prescribed um practices and recommendations when it comes to combating coronavirus should be immune from lawsuits or do you think that they should be should, that they should still be able to you know be sued if there's an outbreak linked to them no, I don't. I mean, I feel if you've taken every bit of precaution, just like all of us can and and, and we do every day, um, things still can happen and they should not be um, liable when they have taken all their precautions that they can take. Um, and people as well need to take all the precautions personally as well. So there has to be some sense of personal responsibility as well um, for behavior. Um. Local governments obviously authorize a lot of public works projects. Uh, do you think that um, the bidding when it comes to those projects, um, public works, should should be given, uh, should preference go to Wisconsin companies when it comes to the, getting bids for those projects? Absolutely. I mean, we need to keep our, we need to keep the people in our communities, our neighbors working. I mean, the job should be pr t totally prioritized to the people in our communities. And um, what do you think sets you apart in that you've got the primary coming up and gosh, very soon actually, what do you think makes you the most qualified um, for for this office, the open seat? Boy, well, um, as you know, um, I was born and raised in the neighborhood and um, prior to being a county board supervisor, I was a volunteer in my community for more than a decade. So even be before becoming a legislator, I had a list of accomplishments that I could point to. And I think that does distinguish me apart from my opponent. I, I don't feel that she does. I mean, I feel like the people know me as well. I'm pretty, I'm very well known um, by the people. They trust me. They know I'm the most qualified person to go to work on day one. You know, I've been a Milwaukee County supervisor for um, a couple of years now. And um, I'm blessed to represent 23 of the 28 wards in this assembly district. So it's almost 90% of the district so I'm very familiar with the issues in the community, but more than anything, I'm solution driven. So I think that's another thing that distinguishes me. I have ideas already to come to Madison with and write legislation right away that can help the people in my community. Um, um, I know I believe I have the greatest in depth of the issues. I have the long, I have a long list of accomplishments. And, you know, the other thing is, you know, uh, for example, um, if you go to my website, you know where I stand on the issues. Um, and it's Sylvia Ortiz Velez .com. Um, You can see where I stand on the platform, um, where I stand on the issue. So I've been very transparent on um, where I am on the issues. And I think that's another big, that's another big um, difference. Um, I feel like I have the best plan to lead. And going forward, I'm the only candidate um, that's been on the ground in redistricting and has the experience. Um, so I, I'm, the, I'm, I'm the candidate that's most qualified to go to work on day one, and I can't wait to get to work. And thank you for the question.
if you are elected, you mentioned that you feel like you'd be ready from day one to start writing legislation. legislation. Absolutely. What do you think would you be your priorities, like some of your first bills, if you're elected, that you think would help your constituents? Well, the first thing I am going to do when I go to Madison, number one, is to help create a dedicated funding source for our, our uh, public transit and money for our potholes and road repair. Um, the legislation for the TNC Uber and Lyft legislation is the first piece of legislation I'm going to draft. Um, the second piece of legislation I'm going to draft is, um, as I mentioned, our my district um, suffers um, the highest uh, deaths in opiate and heroin anywhere in, in the state. And so one thing we can do right away is to do what some other states have done, which is to allow people in our state right now, um, there's something called fentanyl strips and they're considered... E- paraphernalia and it's been saving lives in other states and basically what it is it's able you're able to test the substance and to find out if there's fentanyl in it um so for example um prince died from a fake fentanyl pill if he had the strip he could have tested this and um um, we could have kept them alive we can't help people if we can't keep them alive they do need more than just being kept alive they need mental health we need to be able to provide those services and other wraparound services but first we need to keep them alive so that's something we can do right away to start saving lives all across our state um, so you know um, those are some of my top priorities fighting to make sure that Milwaukee County is getting its fair share of property taxes back um, to Milwaukee County that's my number one prior and I'm at my number three you know those are my top three priorities Absolutely. And then I have to say also cannabis legislation. If I had to pick, I have a lot of things that I want to do. If you want to learn more about what I want to do, you can look at my platform. Um, But those are, those are my top picks. Well, thank you so much for your time. I know you're obviously very busy. And so we appreciate you talking with us and talking more about uh, your stance on the issues. No, thank you. Thank you. And um, when, so when would this be airing? I don't, I didn't ask you before. I'm sorry. Campaign 2020 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Quick Trip, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, and Wisconsin Operating Engineers Local 139.